woolly mammoth looking ass with <clears throat> what what? Hey schnocky pocky but stoody do linky winky binky bong bong lost nana and tonky wonka wonky dong nobody would dude that's exactly what I'm saying. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another Kinda A Review, the show where I ramble on about whatever early access game catches my eye for about five or six minutes before falling asleep and probably forgetting all about it. And this week we have Pit People, a turn-based strategy game by The Behemoth, who also made Alien Hominid, a very fun side-scrolling shooter, Castle Crashers, one of the best beat-em-up games of all time, and Battle Block Theater. I didn't, I, I didn't play that one. So before we go on, I think I should mention something. Right now, you can only play about the first two hours of Pit People's story. So I guess this review, quote unquote, is really more on the demo of Pit People, but hey, I've still got some stuff to say about it, so let's fucking do this, you filthy millennials! So in the world of Pit People, a giant bear crashed into the side of the world and everything fell into chaos. At the beginning, you only control humble blueberry farmer and very moustached man Horatio. Like two minutes in, Horatio's house gets fucking destroyed and his child gets killed, and if this wasn't a comedy game that would be pretty fucked up. So Horatio sets off to start a new life, recruiting friends, exploring the world, and doing oh so much killing Lordy Lou. It is beautiful. Just like the behemoth's previous games, Pit People is a comedy game. I always have respect for games that decide to be fully funny, and most of the comedy in this game comes from the narrator, and arguably main villain, voiced by the incredibly sexy Stamper. Mm. And yeah, from what I played, I think Pit People is funny, the writing is silly and witty, uh, there's jokes on the loading screen, uh, memes, fuck, I can't joke about something that's already funny. I'll just read from the my big butt makes big poops. There we go, wonderful. As you may have guessed, the gameplay is turn-based strategy, similar to Fire Emblem or Banner Saga, except instead of moving your fighters one at a time, you choose where you want them all to go in one move, and then they all move together. This system works well, I think. It's fairly simple, but you still have to think quite strategically about it. And one thing I thought was kind of interesting is the fact that if you put one of your guys next to multiple attackable targets, then they choose which one they attack. So if you want your guy to attack a specific enemy, then you have to put him or her in a place where they can only attack that enemy. I actually think this is a pretty neat idea. It forces you to think more carefully and tactically about where you put your fighters, and I like that. But what I like even more bah -bah 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 -bah, is the recruiting system. There are a small number of core characters that you start off with that contribute to the plot, but after that you have to recruit random enemies if you want a bigger team. So if you're strolling merrily along the overworld and you see a giant fucking pirate and you think to yourself, ooh, I'd quite like to have him on my team, then you have to fight him and everyone with him. So the way you recruit new people in this game is you fight them, kill all their friends, throw a net over them, and then they're automatically your friend. Just like in real life. In all seriousness, I really like this mechanic. Maybe there is another game out there that's done something like this that I just don't know about, but this seems like a pretty original idea to me. It makes random encounters against enemies way more exciting, because if you see an enemy that you like, or one that's super powerful, you might be able to have them with you in your next fight. Plus, there are a lot of different kinds of enemies that have unique abilities and ways they can attack. I really like the feeling of seeing a new kind of enemy, wondering how they work how strong they were, it made the random fights in the overworld actually feel important. Well, I say random fights, but another thing I quite like is how you can see all the enemies in the overworld, and if you don't feel like fighting them, you can just send out a little bomb that will stun them and walk right past. How convenient. Oh yeah, uh, I forgot to mention you can play this game co-op and online. Shit. Yeah, I tried the online briefly and it works quite well. You can fight with your friends in the pit or against your friends in the pit. Basically, just play the game with them. Having a good time talking about boys. 
That's that's what friends do, right? Okay, uh, <laughs> I think I should end this here. So I had a lot of fun with the first couple of hours of Pit People. I really enjoyed what I played, and I feel like if the game can keep up its current level of hilarity throughout the rest of the game, then we may be in for something really special here. I don't usually like talking about early access games, because hypothetically they could at any time remove everything I liked about the game and replace it with piles of shit, making everything good I said about the game mean absolutely nothing. But I I don't think that will happen with Pit People. I've got a good feeling about this game, and I trust the behemoth to make it as awesome as they possibly can. I hope.